Hello, Blender lovers. Today, we're going to talk about why I think Blender is the best texturing software. And no, this is not clickbait. Yes, even when compared to giants like Substance Painter. Broadly speaking, Substance Painter might be the better choice. And that right there is the main problem. A lot of these Blender versus this discussions are always framed in broad terms. But each project is unique, and every artist works differently, with different requirements. What I've found, and what I'm going to talk about, is this. As I texture this old church model I made using both Blender and Substance Painter, I'll show you the main differences and explain why, if you're an independent artist, Blender might actually be the better choice for you than Substance Painter. When texturing objects like this church, I always prefer to bake all my shaders into PBR texture maps for diffuse, roughness, normal, bump, and any other details I want. This process is straightforward in both Blender and Substance Painter. The model is available for download on CG Trader and Patreon if you want to check it out. You'll notice there are two versions of the church, one with baked textures. For this model, I only needed the base color and roughness maps. I didn't add any bump or normal details because they weren't necessary. The model still looks great without them. However, you can include those details if needed for your project. While texturing the model, I used different materials for different parts. For example, I created a wall material that includes a wooden texture, a glass material for the windows, a roof material, concrete for the foundation, and dirt for the graveyard. All these materials were baked into two 4K images, one for the base color and one for the roughness map. This approach keeps the workflow efficient while maintaining the quality of the textures. I'm going to show you how I set everything up, but first, let me show you the procedural setup I created to make it easier for me to update the textures. To bake textures in Blender, the model needs to have non-overlapping UVs. This is also required when texturing in Substance Painter. In Blender, you also need an image texture to bake the textures to. For example, if you're baking a diffuse map, every material you want to bake to that map should have that diffuse image texture. Similarly, when you want to bake the roughness map, you need to create a roughness image for all your materials. This process can be tedious, especially when it comes to updating the baked textures, uh, but I've created a quick and easy way to simplify it. Since the image to bake to must be the same across all materials, you can create an image texture and add it inside a group node. You can then paste this group node into all your materials, open it in each one, and make it the active image. To ensure you don't miss any materials, assign all the materials you want to bake to a single object. Then go through the material slots one by one, making sure to paste the image group and set the bake image as the active image. You can name the image according to the map you're baking. For example, base color for diffuse or roughness, normal for a normal map, or bump for bump details. Since the image texture is within a group, any updates you make will apply to all the materials automatically, so you don't need to make changes individually. Once everything is set up, you can create a new object that will use the bake maps as textures, and all updates will be live. Finally, when baking anything other than ambient occlusion or shadows, set the time limit to one second to significantly speed up the baking process. With that simple setup, I have the model using the baked images on the left, and the model with the procedural materials on the right. If I want to change the color of the wood, for example, I can go to the walls material and make any adjustments I want. Then I go to the group node, change the image to the base color, since we only change the color, select all the objects affected by the change, and proceed to the bake settings. In the bake settings, change the bake type to diffuse. Make sure that under influence, only color is active to avoid baking any lighting or shadows. Also, ensure that clear image is unchecked so that only the selected objects are updated. Then bake and watch the model on the left update. If you want to update the roughness, repeat the same steps, but this time change the image to a roughness image and set the bake type to roughness. One more thing, if you see any dark spots in the image, adjust the margin to something small like 5px to prevent the textures from overlapping. Now watch as I transform this wooden church into a brick church.
Now, here's where I made a mistake. I baked the textures without selecting the group node in the brick texture. As a result, Blender ended up baking directly onto the brick texture itself. To fix this, I had to re-import the original brick texture, select the group node we're baking to, and bake again. Once I did that, everything worked as expected. Now you might be wondering, how is this better than Substance Painter? The answer is that it's simply easier when set up correctly. For example, if I want to change the door, all I have to do is set up a new material for the door, assign it to the door, grab a door texture, import it into the material, and create new UVs to avoid messing up the ones I'm baking to. Then, I align the texture to the door, paste the group node we're using for baking, go to the bake settings, and bake again. It's important to make sure the main UV map is set as the active UVs before you bake. That's all there is to it. The textures will update seamlessly. Doing this in Substance Painter isn't always as straightforward, and for models like this, Blender can often be better at texturing than Substance Painter. Check out the project file. The links are in the description.